Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Skin cancer, Tracy, is the most common form of cancer in the United States. And the deadliest, unfortunately, form of skin cancer is called melanoma. I guess that's why it got the name Black Death Ooh. some years ago. And that's because once melanoma metastasizes or spreads to other parts of the body, the treatment options have historically been pretty limited. The Melanoma Research Laboratory at Mayo Clinic is working to improve survival rates by developing novel treatments for metastatic melanoma. These treatment modalities include immunotherapy, chemotherapy, and nanomedicines. Whatever that is. I'm glad we're going to learn about it. <laughs> As researchers work to understand how the patient's immune system interacts with the tumor. Here to discuss these novel cancer therapies is the director of the Melanoma Research Lab, Dr. Svetomir Markovic. Welcome to the program, Dr. Mark Markovic. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Svetomir. Nice to have you uh, here and always nice Nice to know when you are seeing one of our, our patients, because you're sort of one of the, the melanoma guru around here. And historically, uh, melanoma has been easily curable, easy to treat if it's caught early. But once it metastasizes, once it spreads elsewhere, it's been a very difficult problem uh, forever, as, as long as I can remember. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Tom. This is William Osler even defines melanoma as a cancer that gives cancer a bad name, the father of modern medicine. <laughs> and uh. One of the reasons it has been is that the malignant melanocyte, the, the cell itself, is extraordinarily evolutionarily resistant to all sorts of noxious stimuli. The cell originates from essentially nerve cell origins, and it involves on the skin of the body where it acts as a uh, producer of melanin to protect the skin from ultraviolet radiation. In doing so, the cell is uh, sort of bred to be resistant to various noxious influences like ultraviolet radiation, chemical influences from the skin, and so forth. Thus, when a cell like this becomes malignant, loses its ability to be controlled by the environment for regulated growth, it becomes very difficult to treat. And as, as you well know, over the last 30 years, we've had very little, if anything, until five years ago. Okay. Gosh, I've never heard it explained that way. That's that's very interesting of why it is so resistant to, to treatment, resistant to so many things. Yes. It, it basically, you know, it has the genetic equivalent of an elephant for, for in a very small package, a lot of genes available to protect itself, and it uses them very efficiently. Hmm. Well, what's the current standard? How, and you said until five years ago. So w until five years ago, what was happening? So basically in, in our field, melanoma, metastatic malignant melanoma, as Dr. Shai said, which is a imminently curable disease when caught very, very early. When it becomes metastatic, it, it is essentially life-ending, unfortunately, with most, for most patients. Uh, up until five years ago, uh, all we really had was the treatment that could barely control the pace of growth of this tumor. And we've had uh, treatments that unfortunately could only prolong survival in the matter of months, with average survival times being on the order of seven to nine months, depending on which study. Really? Once it had, had it metastasized, uh, wow. the, the uh, survival is very limited. Extremely limited. And what I normally, unfortunately, within our practice, as, as Tom, as you know, you know, you would see a patient for Thanksgiving, odds of seeing that patient again next Thanksgiving would be relatively low. And mm -hmm. there's been a lot of work in this field because of that. The other interesting thing about melanoma is it can metastasize anywhere, brain, yes. liver, and it can, it can even go to the bone. And as you know, we've, we've seen it in the bone. And the reason that we have had to operate it on uh, operate on it sometimes in the past is because it will grow so much that it compromises the integrity of the bone and we're worried about a fracture. But the interesting thing about it is when you look at melanoma metastatic to bone, it's black. Black. Yes. Just like the original tumor. Really? It is. Oh. True. Black. All right. Well, as my I'm looking at the prep for uh, speaking with you, I come across the phrase immunogenic tumor. Right. Am I saying that right? Correct. Is you're, that correct? You're absolutely right. So and what does that mean? Yeah, I know. It's, it's kind of an interesting story. So back, back in the, the, uh, the 1880s, uh, you know, when uh, Thomas Edison was still working in his shop and, you know, th I think uh, <laughs> Albert Einstein was in his uh, teenage years, uh, a guy by the name of William Coley uh, was a physician in New York Hospital in New York City, uh, the predecessor of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center who had this uh, ingenious idea to infect a sarcoma, which is a different type of cancer, with bacteria. And, it, and he could demonstrate resolution of the tumor. That idea produced uh, in the late 1980s, uh, or 1880s, I apologize, uh, what, it, what was known at the time, Coley's toxin, as the first 
treatment mm -hmm. by which the harnessing of the immune system could be narrowed and directed towards the cancer. This is in the days prior to cytotoxic chemotherapy, prior to what in the 50s and 60s we would refer to as the dawn of cytotoxic chemotherapy. The problem is with the introduction of cytotoxic chemotherapy, of the drugs that kill cancer, melanoma re continued to be resistant. And a lot of us that sort of devoted a substantial part of their professional lives to trying to understand and treat this disease had to really start looking at alternative options to the treatment uh, that were not chemotherapy, but that involved immunologic treatments. The tumor is immunogenic because for time in memoriam, we've known that the immune system does recognize the cancer, but it cannot do anything about it. And I would say the last probably 15 years have truly been uh, a renaissance in the field of cancer immunotherapy, specifically in melanoma, metastatic melanoma management research. So what have you got now, uh, sure. and, and how does it work? Well, I've got a few things. I've got a few things, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, we said yeah. immunotherapy, chemotherapy, and nanomedicine. nanomedicine. So let's start with immunotherapy. So basically, you know, five years ago, 2011 is sort of the, the watershed year, I think, in our field. I think everything in metastatic melanoma knowledge prior to 2011 is referred to as the Jurassic period. And everything <laughs> since then uh, is really knowledge new, uh, newly generated and newly incorporated into practice. Uh, Fundamentally, what we have now learned is uh, we've gotten insights as to how to regulate the body's immune system so it can overcome uh, the ways by which the tumor protects itself from immunologic destruction in, in sort of very creative ways. Some work that was originally done at the Mayo Clinic uh, about 17 years ago uh, here by now Dr. Uh, Haidang Dong, who's one of our colleagues. So immunologic therapy in, in today's setting that has led to average survival time now in the two-year mark relative to seven to nine months is a big step forward, but it's still not curative. So what we're doing right now in the realm of immunotherapy is trying to understand how do the 1,100 regulators of the immune system respond in patients that are treated with immune drug X and how the system, the body responds to that in those that do well versus do poorly, and how do we take advantage of that? A lot of work within our group and others in dissecting the environment of the tumor, sort of the battlefield between the immune system and the cancer. Also, the systemic uh, circulation and the blood state of the immune system that in some people lends themselves to more resp a greater response to immunotherapy, others it does not. And then various uh, sort of moving knobs as to adjust inflammation as uh, ergo immunity to destroy the tumor. So basically, when you talk about an immunotherapy, you're, you're saying that the body's immune system does recognize the fact that melanoma shouldn't be there and it's cancer and the, the immune system wants to get rid of it, but it can't. So you're jacking up the immune system in a way? Pretty much, Tom. And what's, what's interesting about it is, is jacking up alone probably helps you with a tire, but not with the cure of cancer. So what, what we've learned is that, the so if you can imagine this is a recipe that has about 1,100 ingredients in it, and we're trying to make it taste well for a unique audience, as an analogy. And in doing so, each intervention produces a counter-intervention by the body's immune system. Probably, and interestingly, uh, what we're learning recently, in a mechanism not all that different than how the placenta protects the baby from the mother's immune system. So a multitude of different regulators protect the fetus from being rejected from the mom's immune system. The melanoma is a live organism and in, in many ways a parasite into the body once it becomes metastatic. So it is actively co-opting the regulation of the systemic immune system in a way that it allows it to survive. The task for us is to understand how it's doing that overcome it at the battlefield and also overcome it in the garrisons, you know, throughout the body where the immune cells are being made to fight it. So you have improved or increased the uh, survival for patients with metastatic melanoma from what, seven to nine months to what now? An average of two years. And wow. I can tell you we are, uh, my, my fellows, you know, those that come to train with us now yeah. are, are very disappointed when we don't create a complete remission in a patient with metastatic melanoma, which six, seven years ago was an impossibility unheard and unheard of. 
Well, you know, Dr. Markov, it's great to hear that you're making good progress. And we want to take more, we don't want, and we want to talk more about it, uh, but we need to take a short break. Dr. Svetomir Markovic is a cancer specialist and director of the Mayo Clinic Melanoma Research Lab. We'll be back to talk more with Dr. Markovic in a second. You are listening to Mayo Clinic Radio on the Mayo Clinic News Network. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Our guest is Dr. Svetomir Markovic. He's a cancer specialist, a melanoma specialist, and director of the Mayo Clinic Melanoma Research Lab. He's been talking to us about novel new therapies, fortunately, that we now have for the treatment of malignant melanoma. So we talked about immunotherapy, uh, chemotherapy. The world of chemotherapy is always changing, I suppose, when drug companies are involved, correct? Correct. So what's different in chemotherapy? So what's interesting about uh, melanoma, again, coming from from a disease in which nothing has worked for very many years, there has been a a series of almost generational uh, expansion of people that have tried to sort of crack this nut. Uh, And some of them have been immunologists from the immunology background, and others have also been pharmacologists, people that that have developed in their scientific lives into into understanding and decoding the human genome and what that means. And so since the uh, development of the Human Genome Project, uh, the sort of our awareness of the multitude and heterogeneity of the genome uh, that led to the tumor uh, genome atlas as, as to identify mutations unique to various malignancies, one of the early findings in around 2000, 2001 that was published by the uh, Wellcome Fund was that a certain series of genes were necessary for the survival of melanocytes, the normal cells. And these genes were extensively hyperactive in the context of malignant melanoma. Are these considered the genes of the patient or the genes of the tumor? These are the genes of the tumor. Okay. These are the genes. Cancer, if you think of cancer as a disease in general, cancer is really a, a, a genetic disorder, a disorder of mutated genes that allows the cancer cell to live in a different way relative to its normal counterpart. But how does it go from me, the patient, having cancer sure. and my genes to the tumor having its own genetics? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what happens really, so the, the question is, what is the intervention uh, that, that takes place? And in malignant melanoma, it is a very simple answer. It's ultraviolet light. Oh. Ultraviolet light takes uh, these cells that are rapidly dividing in the skin whose sole job is to protect the skin from ultraviolet injury. Because it produces pigment produces pigment. Yeah, and, while, and that's why you tan when you, you're out in the sun. Exactly right. And what also happens is when you when you don't tan fast enough, but you burn, the top layers of the skin that protect these cells from extensive ultraviolet damage lose that level of protection. And now the ultraviolet radia- radiation, which serves as a carcinogen, creates mutations. Cancer-causing. Cancer-causing agent creates mutations, injury to the DNA of these malignant melanocytes that are sort of fighting to protect the rest of the of, of the cohorts from ultraviolet radiation and doing so become themselves susceptible. Once these events take place, as they call somatic mutations, uh, take over and the tumor and the cells become not nor- normal but transform into malignant phenotype. It's those genetic mutations that as of roughly eight years ago, we can now therapeutically target. And that's why you and a lot of other colleagues are not big fans of tanning baths. Nope, we're not. (laughs) Because because tan is damage, uh, just like a burn is damage. So there is not a healthy tan. Not really. I hate to say it. Probably the best one is one from a bottle. Hmm. Tan from a bottle. (laughs) Spray on. (laughs) That's the kind to do. Do you have any idea how many different agents, uh, modalities, have been tried to treat uh, to treat melanoma over the, the past few decades? Because I, I can remember interferon, all different sorts of chemotherapeutic agents. How many? Do you, ha- you have any idea? There is, there has never, there has never been a oncologic agent, a, a chemical treatment of cancer that, that is currently or has ever been in clinical practice that has not been used in malignant melanoma. Mm, wow. Give them all a You've try. tried everything. Everything. All uh, right, so now nanomedicines. Yes. What does that mean? So one of the one of the age-long problems in cancer therapy when the cancer is disseminated uh, has been how to deliver the right drug to the right cell all the time. And you can imagine if you have cancer cells 
uh, 10 in the lung, 100 in the liver, 5,000 in the leg, 4 in the brain, and you have to deliver a drug that will have to hit all of those, uh, and you can only inject it into the vein. Whatever amount of drug you give, only a small fraction goes to those small enclaves of cancer cells, whereas the rest of it bathes the body in a toxic agent. So most of chemotherapy, as chemical treatment of cancer is developed, we are only able to dose based on maximally tolerated dosing because so much of the drug, 95 plus percent of it, goes to normal, normal organs and only a little of it actually gets into the tumor. And that's why so many side effects from chemo. Exactly. In many ways, that's, that's the, the bane of chemothera- uh, chemical therapy of cancer. So about five, six years ago, uh, through a relatively serendipitous uh, set of events in our lab, where something that we thought wasn't working, but effectively, in fact, was, but we didn't understand why it was, we came to a realization that we could glue two unique molecules uh, together, uh, and one of which uh, was a virus-like a- a particle uh, that could be loaded with chemical agents, and the other was an immunoglobulin, uh, which is a molecule that could seek out features of cancer and provide a guidance system to that bigger molecule that we've attached to it. So in many ways, we've developed what it looked like five years ago as a smart bomb for cancer. The seeking piece of it was the antibody, which is a normal immunologic product of, of life, where the body makes immuno, uh, antibodies to fight infections. So we simply took an antibody that would recognize a cancer and glued onto it uh, a, a, a toxic payload. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> wow. toxic payload. I like it. Yeah. And it goes where it needs to go, whether it's the 5,000 cells in the leg yeah. or the four, th- four cells in the brain. Without going to where it's not supposed to go. Theoretically, that's the plan. Uh, we've now made 10 agents like this, 10 nanoparticles for various different malignancies. The first one is in clinical trials now in metastatic melanoma and ovarian metastatic ovarian cancer. And we're very excited by the early data. It's a phase one, you know, first in man first in human clinical trial. And just yesterday, we submitted our second of a series of 10 uh, agents for the treatment of uh, hematologic malignancies. So uh, this is what this is where the word targeted therapy yes, came from? exactly. Okay, so you've got targeted therapy yep. for uh, melanoma. You've also got immunotherapy. Now, I assume the targeted therapy is similar to chemotherapy yep. in that you give it intravenously. Yes. What about immunotherapy? How do you give that? So immunotherapy, right now, the, the, most, the greatest success has been with intravenous treatments. Again, the idea of uh, sort of overcoming uh, the barriers that the tumor produces by making the host immune system such that it allows the tumor to grow, and we simply disrupt that signal. Uh, there's colleagues of ours in, in Florida uh, are, have discovered a combinatorial regimen with a topical drug applied to a metastatic melanoma that has a component of intratumoral tumoral injection. Uh, some of our colleagues here in uh, radiation oncology have figured out that if you radiate the melanoma, which, by the way, you know, years ago was considered to be a radiation-resistant tumor, but if you give enough of the radiation, not only will it destroy the tumor, but it will generate an immune alert throughout the body to cause these immunologic treatments to work better, we can modulate the immune system in different ways. Well, fortunately, and hopefully in the future, malignant melanoma, especially metastatic malignant melanoma, will not be known as the Black Death anymore. That's the plan. Dr. (laughs) Spider-Markovic. I was just going to say, and I would imagine this transfers over to other cancer treatments in, in coming years. All cancers, all the time. Great work. Dr. Svetomir Markovic, he is cancer specialist, melanoma expert, and director of the Mayo Clinic Melanoma Research Lab. Great to have you with us. Thank you.